Welcome everyone to what to say and how to say it using words and images to craft your email message. My name is Lisa Ann Landry and welcome to this webinar. I am an authorized local expert with Constant Contact and uh, the best selling author of a book called Content Marketing How to Get Started. And I am a social media marketing strategist. I own my own business. It's called Paradigm Shifts Training and Development. And in my business, I'm an international trainer and speaker. I write and create content and then deliver live seminars and webinars. As a social media strategist, I work with service-based entrepreneurs uh, to help them use uh, social media and email marketing tools. I combine it in an integrated strategy that helps them to increase their visibility, uh, protect their uh, image and increase business. So that is a little bit about me. And um, if you would like to stay in touch with me, uh, most of you all uh, subscribed to my email list, but if you happen to get to this webinar and you didn't, you can send a text to uh, this number, 22828, with the message social marketing and you will join my list. Uh, I would love for you to follow me on my social sites. You'll only want to follow me on my sites if you want to keep up to date on social media and email marketing. Uh, so I use my sites to share tips and tools and strategies and resources and whatnot. So I'm on Facebook. Um, look for the SNCC way, or you can look for Lisa Ann Landry. I'm on LinkedIn at linkedin.com uh, slash I N Lisa A Landry. I am on Twitter. My Twitter handle is Lisa A Landry. And then I'm also on YouTube where I post a short little videos, uh, tips and whatnot. So on YouTube, I'm Lisa A Landry on YouTube. So I'd like to start by um, taking a minute to explain what constant contact is for those of you who may not be familiar with it. Have you ever needed a tool to create business newsletters, announcements, and events? Something to help you create and manage campaigns? Well, I had a client that was looking for solutions to promote her business, and I told her, Constant Contact is a do-it-yourself online marketing system. You can use it to create and manage campaigns. The company is best known for its email marketing tools. It's easy to create and send mass emails like newsletters or announcements. Um, you can run special promotions and offers. You can build online surveys and polls to gather feedback, and you can promote and manage your events using content, constant contact with registration tools, much like you use to sign up for this event. It also has payment acceptance, um, as well as invitations, all in one place. All of this is built on top of a really good contact database so that you can load all of your contacts, your customers, stakeholders, volunteers, staff, or even your board members on whatever list you're keeping in various spreadsheets or from Outlook, Gmail, or Yahoo folders. All of that can be loaded and organized easily in constant contact so that your people and your marketing campaigns are all together in one spot. Oh, and it costs for most people between $20 and $75 a month to manage all of this. And you know, it really depends upon the size of your list. I want to give you a simple definition or framework for what marketing really is. Now, you already know generally what it is, but when I say the word marketing, I mean something very specific, and it's important that we are on the same page. My definition of marketing has three simple parts. One, you define an audience, a group of people that you want to target. Two, you reach out to them with a message that is specific to that audience. And three, you elicit a physical and measurable response, which are the results that you want and need your business to get. So what kind of results are we talking about? These are examples of physical measurable responses. These actions represent a decision by a person to do something in response to what you put out there. 
It's not a mechanical response. It's a human response, and it must be measurable. But keep in mind that your overall goal comes down to why you're in business and what's going to keep you in business. And what is that? Generating revenue, of course, or for some of you, it could be donations. If the responses you're getting don't lead in some way directly to the bottom line, then you should evaluate why you're driving those types of responses. Today, we're going to talk about how the content you share, whether it's written or images, can drive the response you need to help your business and your organization. Content is currency in the internet, and that works offline too. When it comes to content, you have an advantage over big business and organizations because you can use the tools and tips we'll talk about today to have a real conversation with your customers, your clients, members, and volunteers. You can also use the feedback and questions to come up with new content. Content is what people search for, consume, and share. It's what they pay attention to. Through the content you email to your audience, you can become a source that your customers, clients, members, and volunteers know, like, and trust. As we progress through this presentation, think about the conversations you have with your customers or clients. What questions do they ask you? How can you use those questions and conversations to create a great email? Now let's tackle the big question. What kind of content should you use in email? Well, my clients struggle with this, but it's, it's simple email content basically boils down to a picture, a photograph, and a call to action. Email content is made up of words, images, and videos you use in your email campaigns that is designed to attract, convert, or retain an audience. When you're sending out an email to the people on your contact list, you want to make sure it's relevant and interesting and includes a clear call to action, meeting the response you're seeking to solicit from your reader, whether that's buying a product or taking your advice, maybe signing up for your service, referring you to friends, or donating to your not-for-profit, answering your survey, or whatever action you're hoping they take. You can make that action easily accessible by including links to whatever you want your audience to do. Here's an example of an email from a company called Great Vacation Retreats. At the top of the message, they have a great picture that prominently features their brand and a text box that announces their deal, a paragraph that describes it, and a link, which is a call to action for the readers to view their available vacation rentals. Even if they didn't list the individual rentals in the email, they'd have more than enough information that communicates the action they want their audience to take to book a rental in Kauai. Uh, I have to remind my clients of a, this little bonus tip I'm going to share with you, but the approach that Great Vacation Retreats took with this email is inherently mobile friendly. It's a single column template that's not too much text and not too long. So this email will look great no matter where someone opens it, whether it's on their desktop or on a mobile device. Remember when you're thinking of content that you'll create from scratch, you're not writing for yourself. You're writing for your audience. So make the message relevant, short, and focused. Your email shouldn't be telling recipients every single thing that you do. And it shouldn't include extraneous information either. You can make it relevant to your audience by thinking about conversations you've had with your clients, customers, and members after an interaction. You may want to jot some ideas down that can help expand you help you expand upon the topic. I've mentioned relevance a few times now, and here's why it's important that you include content that's for your audience and not for yourself. 38% of email recipients will unsubscribe if they think the content in your email is boring or irrelevant. And when a person unsubscribes, you won't be able to communicate with them again. 32% will send irrelevant content to their spam folder, which could impact email providers like uh, Gmail or Yahoo and how they sort your future emails. Are you ready to get some strategies on what to say and how to say it to your ideal clients? 
And for a lot of you, this will be plenty to get you started and get you going. For others, you're going to say, this is just whetting my appetite. So some of you may even want a little bit more handholding. Well, I'm going to give you some uh, offers at the end of this session so that you can take advantage of more in-depth kind of help. First, let's talk about our agenda. And we're going to start by talking about creating content. We'll address how you'll come up with ideas for the words, images, and calls to action you will use in your email marketing. Then we'll talk about curating content, how to find and share content from other outside sources that you can use in your marketing. We'll also talk about extending your reach beyond your email by using social media. Then we'll talk about how you can get started developing content ideas for your own organization. So let's begin with creating content. What do you write about in your emails? This is one of the biggest questions and the biggest hurdles people encounter when they set out to create email. In fact, not only is it one of the biggest questions and hurdles for people creating content for emails, I found it's a huge challenge for people creating content for their social sites too. As a social media strategist and trainer, the question has come up so many times, it led me to write a book called Content Marketing, How to Get Started. I'm going to share some tips from my book with you throughout this presentation, but the good news is that you know your organization better than anyone, and there's a world of ideas out there for you. First, and above all else, you write about what you know that they don't know. This is an opportunity to share your knowledge and raise your profile as an interesting organization and an expert in your field. Here are some ideas of the types of content that you can share with your audience. Take a minute and look at what's on the screen right now and be thinking of ways you can explore these ideas with content about your business. So let's talk about a few of these. Offerings. I had a client with a new product. So I had her write a paragraph describing what it is and had her use photos and videos to share quick product demonstrations or tutorials. I used a newsletter to announce the launch of my new book and included a picture of the front cover and a link to Amazon where people could purchase it. If you have an event coming up, send out all the details in a short email, including a link to register for the event. It was great to use Constant Contact's event spot to send out invitations to you guys to enroll and participate in this webinar. I did the same thing for my book launch. Updates. Do you have a new location? I recently moved from Seattle to Atlanta, and boy, does that make for great content for a newsletter. I even included the picture of the moving van that was loaded with our furniture when it left Seattle and then when it was unloaded in Atlanta. Have you hired a new employee, or do you have a well-known employee retiring? Share their history at the company. Send out a biography and a photo to your customers and clients. Updates can go out in the form of newsletters or even press releases. Perhaps you're a not-for-profit and you've received a big grant. That's a perfect reason to send out an email update. Do you have a recent event? Send out a survey asking recipients how it was or send an email to share photos of the event. Here's another one, education. You are an expert in your field. So write about what you know that your audience doesn't know. This is your opportunity to weigh in with your perspective, maybe on a study or on a news story. If you sell a product, you can make a video that demonstrates how to use it. You can also share your know-how. Let's say you own a landscaping company. You can send out an email early in the spring and lay out a good planning schedule for your clients. I use my newsletters to educate people about social media marketing and content marketing. When I do webinars, that Constant Contact Event Spot is a perfect tool to track registrations and collect payments. Entertainment is another one. Don't be afraid to show your fun side. Have you seen a funny YouTube video that relates to your field? Or have you heard an interesting, funny, or inspiring quote that you want to share? 
Maybe you and your employees have made a cool behind the scenes video that is something that could really show off the environment and your personality. My clients often ask how much content you should include in an email. Well, I want you to think about this. How often do you look forward to reading a really, really long, detailed email from a business? Not very often, right? You're looking for something concise and easy to read, like what's the news? What are the details of the deal or the sale? Is there any action I want or need to take? And that's what you should think about when you create emails. When it comes to email content, less is more, always. There's no rule that says your newsletter needs to have three articles, three pictures, or three links. One thing is plenty. There is actually a constant contact customer whose newsletter is called One Thing. And he did that to make it easy on himself, and it works really well. People can absorb it, and he's not under the gun to come up with a bunch of content to fill it. We did a study of customers and found that the best practice is to limit yourself to 20 lines of text and three or fewer images. Just like you, your audience is busy. You don't need to worry about sending a ton of information every time. Our research also shows that one link gets the best click-through rates. You want your audience to take an action, so use a link to make that clear. Two links are okay, but once you get to three links, the click-through rates start to decline. And higher than five links means that people are less likely to click anywhere in your email. So try to stick with one, only one, maybe two links, and keep them high in your message so that people don't have to scroll down to take the action. And don't forget that more than half of your audience is reading your emails on a mobile device. So who's going to scroll through 14 articles on their phone? And for, you mo for your mobile readers, make sure that you're keeping your message short and your calls to action above the fold, meaning the reader doesn't have to scroll down to get the rest of the content. Even if the idea of content still feels overwhelming, just remember, Keep your message short and focused is actually much better than putting tons of information into one email. And I have some other tips for you, though. You can use outlines to help you further focus your ideas and organize the sections of your email. Any text you'll write yourself, any photo or videos you want to use, and any content from outside sources that you want to share. And we'll talk more about curated content in a few minutes. Jot down a list of topics that come up in conversations with your customers. Now, one of the things that I'll ask my audiences when I'm training is in your line of business, have you not been asked the same question over and over and over and over and over again? Well, that's a clue as to some of the content that you might need to create because people are telling you what they have questions about. Use the spark of ideas for your email campaigns. If you get five questions from your client, that's five separate email topics you can build upon. Show your expertise in your field. Become a knowledgeable resource for your audience, and they will look forward to your emails. And make your message reflect your brand. Now, this is easy to do with email tools like Constant Contact. We won't get into email design today, but you can visit the Constant Contact website for great design tips and tricks to make your emails look visually fantastic. Let's talk about turning your interactions with customers into content for emails. Think for a second about the last interaction you had with someone at your organization. What question did a customer or client have? What information are people requesting about your not-for-profit? Can you turn an answer to their questions into an email? Here are some great examples. In my book, in Content Marketing, How to Get Started, I invite the reader to go on a scavenger hunt and gather content that's already been created. One lady, for an example, told me that she had a hard copy of all the newsletters her company had ever sent out since 1986. Okay, it's what? 
2017 now. So that is a ton of content, and that content is likely evergreen. Like evergreen content never goes out of style. So that content can be repurposed for your social sites and for your email newsletters. So things like cartoons, jokes, fun facts, and whatnot. So an easy way to kind of practice this in real life is to create on a spreadsheet or just a simple piece of paper, two columns. And uh, in one column, you just might write down all the questions that people ask you. And then the, in the other column, come up with some answers to those questions. And that's just getting you started on the kind of content that you could put in your emails, your social content, even blog content. I want to show you the difference between a regular email from, let's say, your Outlook, Gmail, or Yahoo account, and one sent through an email service provider like Constant Contact. An email from a service provider looks better and gets you noticed. It has branding features um, that you can use. It will help you um, uh, brand your colors. It has clickable buttons and trackable features. You can use it to feature your brand's logo and colors and include graphics that will capture your reader's attention. All of this, including the graphics, comprise your email content. With a combination of text and great images, you will get through to your audience. And from a purely legal and practical perspective, an email service provider will help protect your message from being considered spam. So check out the email on the right. The colors and graphics make the message eye-catching and more professional looking than the one on the left. As a matter of fact, and this might be a huge relief for those of you who are suffering from writer's block, but great content does not have to be written at all. Visual content like videos and photos, graphics and word images make a huge impact on an email inbox. Did you know that 90% of information processed by the brain is visual content, and more than half of consumers believe that images are a very important factor when buying? Visuals are important to your business because they influence customers' purchasing decisions. 67% of consumers believe that images are a very important factor when selecting and purchasing a product. You can use photos to show off your product or shots from a recent event. And you can link to videos to show your organization in action or a product demonstration. Word images, a brief phrase, statistic, or a quote over a background image are a great way to share information in an eye-catching way. And creating visual content is easier than ever these days. Almost anyone with a smartphone has the ability to shoot high-quality photos and videos. And you don't need too much time or a huge marketing budget to create compelling images anymore. You've got the technology right in your pocket. You've heard that a picture is worth a thousand words. In your email, you can communicate through images as well as text. Turn your images into clickable links so that when your readers click on the image, they will be directed to the action you want them to take. Just make sure you also include a text link to the same location because about 67% of me email readers will not see images by default. Email tools like Constant Contact make it easy to use a URL to your image and also to add alt text so that a description of the image appears even if the reader can't see the picture. Here's a side note. Try to avoid giving too much choice in your campaign. These are supposed to be quick decisions to act. Click to shop on your online store or select an item and click to buy. Too many choices will reduce the number of decisions or actions a person can take. It's a time limit thing. So think of your campaign as window shopping. You want to entice someone to come in right then and buy because of whatever you got their attention with. When you're using images in your marketing, you're faced with the task of creating that content, deciding what images are best, and determining the context and the story around them. That's a lot to think about, and you're probably wondering where to begin. Well, here's some directions. You can create images 
around things like your business, your environment and what's going on around you, around your expertise, as well as themes that you decide your audience will love to hear about. You don't have to have a product to sell to include visual content in your emails. If you have a new employee, feature that photo with a caption explaining who they are and what they'll be, bring to your business. If you're a nonprofit, share a photo of a recent event or a graphic showing the progress of your fundraising campaign. Photos are a frequent and necessary piece for visual content. Sometimes you might find you need a photo that you don't have or you can't create on your own. There are a variety of stock photo sites where you can search for just the right photo that fits your needs. They are a great resource and can work well for visual content that's based around a theme, a tip, a fact, or a quote. When you download a photo, be sure it's the right size or slightly larger. You can always crop it or scale it down, but it will lose image quality if you try to enlarge a small image too much. But it's really never a good idea to use just any images you might find through a search, including sample stock photos with a watermark on them. There can be copyright issues associated with those images. They belong to someone else, and when using stock photos, you purchase the right to use the photo, or in some cases, accept a free download and agree to certain credit conditions. Fees can vary, so shop around for what feels right for you and fits your budget. Here are some services that you can use to get free stock photos. Big Stock. There's also Stock Vault. There's free images and there's uh, free digital photos. But for Constant Contact customers, you have access to over 12 million images through Big Stock. But even if you aren't a customer, you can uh, go and check Big Stock out and see what kind of deals they have for you there. Video is a powerful way to engage with your audience. People prefer watching a video to reading long web pages full of text. When you're using video, make sure you mention in your subject line th that your email includes a video so your reader knows about it right away. Consumers prefer watching a video to reading long text articles. In fact, 50% of people are more likely to read emails that include a video. But make sure the length of your video is within 90 seconds. That's the point at which 58% of viewers will stop watching. You can make video work for your business. Use it to show product demos, customer testimonials, promotional material, or short user-generated content. Now we're talking about email today, but video is becoming very prominent on social media. 84% of consumers have liked videos from companies in their social media news feeds. If you email a video link, you can also repurpose it on your social media platforms for that audience to watch and share. The example here is a great way to use video. The Pajama program sent this email out with a link to a video thanking their donors. Just remember, keep your video short. I know I've said it already, but your audience really has short attention spans, so video shouldn't be more than 90 seconds long. Make sure you use video in a careful and deliberate way also. If you have some specific action that you want a reader to take, for example, register for an event, you should choose text and pictures rather than video, because using a video in this case will lessen the likelihood that your reader will take that action, because when they click on the, the video, they're going to be taken over to YouTube to watch the video. So now let's talk about curated content. That's focused on finding and distributing content that is relevant, educational, entertaining, and newsworthy. At this point, you might be feeling overwhelmed, thinking you have to think up infinite ideas to create content from scratch. Well, that's not the case at all. You do not have time to spare in the operation of your organization and your small business. The great news is that you can curate content meaning that you can find content created by others and share it with your email content contacts as well as on your social platforms. 
So think about, for example, a curator at an art museum. The art museum staff, they don't create the art. They use their knowledge and expertise to collect authentic, collect, you know, search for, collect, and present authentic artwork from many different sources, and they arrange them in a way that's educational and organized. They're not responsible for painting every canvas. Well, your curated content could be a link to a news article related to your organization with a brief paragraph, including your perspective. The example on the screen is of a cycling company sharing their favorite headlines in cycling news for a weekly newsletter. All they had to do was write a brief introduction and then link to the articles. Your audience will come to rely on you as an expert in your field. Now, I used to not understand why, you know, my audience would want to read curated content from me that I didn't create. But the fact of the matter is they need your expertise to find the good stuff, and they don't have time to find it on their own. So let's say that you run an animal shelter, and you come across an article about coyotes in your area. Well, you can introduce that link by giving some helpful tips for pet owners to keep their dogs and cats safe. Or maybe you're, you own a restaurant and a new food trend has been talked about in the national media. Well, you can link to a video from a TV station and tell your contacts how you've added some trendy items onto your menu. There are a lot of different places online where you can find content curated content to share with your in your emails and on your social sites. One place is by reading your local and regional news. Maybe you've been mentioned or maybe you have something to say about what's going on in your community. A lot of news sites offer their uh, recent content for free. Just make sure that if you link to content on a news site, it's not something that your reader is going to have to subscribe to. You can read blogs related to your field. One way to easily gather lots of blog posts is through a site called Feedly. It's a service that aggregates blogs from all over. You can customize your Feedly account by selecting the areas you're interested in reading about. It's a great way to find content you'll share with your contacts. You should follow others on social media, like I asked you to do with me, for those of you who want to stay current on social media. There's a world of almost infinite possibilities out there. So let's go back to the animal shelter uh, that I used a minute ago. They would want to follow other shelters as well as the SPCA and pet retailers and other animal advocacy groups and share content from those sources. Something that you can easily do is set a Google alert. So if you're not using Google alerts, just do a search on Google alerts and Google will give you a menu to follow where you can set alerts. Google will aggregate pages that mention a phrase you've created an alert for. You should definitely set one using your organization's name to keep an eye on what people are saying about you online. You might subscribe to other people's email lists. This is a great way to get ideas for content and see what other people are sharing. And finally, you should always provide links to the original source and let people know why you're sharing the content. One way to get creative and great content to easily share via email and social media is to have others create it for you. You can do that through sharing behind the scenes videos or photos like uh, this one from the Avenue Gallery showing one of its employees loading a painting to be transported. You can also use client or customer testimonials. There are a few ways you can approach these. You can ask a client to share their story on video or write a paragraph about their experience. Or if you have a place on your website for reviews, you can pull content right from those reviews. You can also compile user-generated content. This Facebook post from Wakiva Falls RV Park shares a photo from a customer who documented her recent event. One way to inspire user-generated content is to create a hashtag. A hashtag is a word or phrase beginning with a pound sign or a hash sign that creates a link connecting all of the posts using that hashtag on a particular social network.
You can create your own hashtag by coming up with a unique word or phrase, or even your brand name. Make sure you keep it short and don't use any spaces or punctuation, just letters and numbers. For example, in my content that I post on my social sites, I use uh, the hashtag social media strategist when I share content about social media. For more ideas on how to use hashtags for branding, campaign, and other things, take a look at my book. It's packed with ideas. Once you've created a hashtag, you'll ask your customers, clients, members, employees, and volunteers to create social media posts with that hashtag. Then you can select your favorite content from there to share in your emails and on your social sites. Now we're going to talk about how you can extend your reach beyond just your email audience. Once you've decided what content you're going to use in communications, it's time to share it. This way, you extend your reach as much as possible. Using email is one way to share your content, but you can also share it through social media. Email marketing tools like Constant Contact make it easy for you to share your content on different social platforms and also for your audience to share your content across their platforms. When you're thinking about content to use on social media, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can use the content you've already sent in your email and just break it into smaller pieces of social media content. Don't worry, this isn't going to translate into a lot of extra work for you. You're already building out content for the future as you focus on your emails. So for example, let's say you're a marketing consultant for businesses that run a lot of events, and you've sent an email to those clients with four tips about selling more tickets for their events. We'll call that your original email. Now let's quickly think of a few ways to extend the content by ex expanding on each tip as its very own social media post. The tip on sending your invitation in advance could be expanded to a Facebook post about when to send your event invitations. Hanging flyers in your store could be turned into a great infographic on effective flyer design that you share across all your social networks. Advice to post events on Facebook could expand to a blog post on promoting events on Facebook, which you can share across all your social sites. And a tip about special pricing for VIPs could be repurposed into five tweets spread across the day about the things VIPs want. Here's an example of a company, the Grafton Inn in Vermont, repurposing content. They use this image of a porch swing in their email, which announced the summer activities at the end. They repurpose the photo on Facebook to share their weekly schedule. And on Instagram, they shared it with their followers with a cute caption. You can do the same thing. Take a tip, a quote, an image, or anything that your audience will find interesting and share it on whatever social network you use. Now, do keep a few things in mind. First, each social site has a culture, and with the culture comes a language. So you want to respect the culture of the site as you post the content. So change the content a little bit for each network. And I'm not just talking about the size. Change the caption or text in the post to reflect the style and etiquette and voice for each network. Don't post exactly the same thing in each place. Next, don't worry about being repetitive. People are following you because they like you. They might miss your post on Facebook, but maybe catch it later on Pinterest. Or they might follow you on Pinterest and not on Facebook. So you need to make sure you're covering all the places people might be seeing your content. Finally, while we're talking about using multiple social networks, just keep in mind that you don't have to use all of them for your business. Just choose the ones that are right for you and your audience. It's better to focus on a couple of social networks and do a good job with them than to have a bunch that you don't have time for and then you manage poorly. When it comes to extending your reach, you want to make sure that you're meeting your audience where they are. Email is a great place to start.
but you can reach more people by sharing your email content on all of your social media platforms too. Think about it this way. There's probably some overlap between your email contact list and your followers on social media. But those groups are not likely to be identical. Also, what your followers do on social media, their followers see. If someone likes or comments on your post on Facebook, all of their friends will see that and see your name. Marketing on social media tends to be less expensive than traditional advertising. If cost is an issue, you'll get more return on your time, money, and energy by going first through email and subsequently through Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, etc. Each has its own typical audience and decision process. You want to start on the social network uh, you are already using and then begin to move to where your customers and contacts are so that you can leverage the existing network you have on those sites and begin to generate some social visibility along the way. To be clear, email is part of social media. And if you're doing it right, keeping your message short, making the action or response obvious and simple and providing access, information, and real value, then you will grow your business. The best part of this is if you're a constant contact customer, we make sharing emails on social media really easy. If you're using Constant Contact, just add the share bar to the top of your emails. This allows your readers to post a link to your email on their social media profiles. And add social media buttons that link to your business's social media profiles. The buttons are a nice visual reminder for them to click and follow you online. Remind your audience to share your promotions. Ask them to like them on Facebook, retweet on uh, Twitter, and pin on Pinterest. Your audience has a lot of influence via word of mouth, and you can get your promotions in front of more people, their friends and family, if they help spread the word for you. Constant Contact allows you to extend the reach of your emails by using Social Share Tool. Social Share offers a quick and easy way to share an email on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn with suggested post, post message, image, and the best times to schedule posts based upon when your social audience is most active. It also makes it easy to plan social posts for an email with a monthly calendar. Now let's talk about the next steps you can take. Remember, when you're thinking of the content that you'll create from scratch, you're not writing for yourself. You're writing for your audience. So use links to direct your audience where you want them to go and make your message relevant, short, and focused with the call to action very clear. It can be very helpful to keep a calendar to schedule emails and social media posts ahead of time. Keep that running list of topics that come up in your organization and plan out your publishing schedule in whatever way that works best for you. There are no hard and fast rules about how you should schedule. Just make sure whatever you do is realistic for you to follow, whether you're using an Outlook calendar, a Google Doc, a notes app or your mobile device or a handwritten schedule or anything else that keeps you organized. If you're using an email marketing service like Constant Contact, you can track which types of content get the most clicks and opens and use that information as a guide for future emails. You can also, from time to time, send out a survey asking your audience what types of content that they would prefer to receive from you. In the beginning of the presentation, I said that email content boils down to a picture, a paragraph, and a call to action. You can use this as a really basic outline to create content for any subject that you can think of. Take the last question you answered for a customer and develop an email around it using a picture, a paragraph, and a call to action. Let's go back to our first example about the vacations in Hawaii and say our customer question is, what offers are available for renting in Kauai? First, 
the picture. Remember, 90% of information absorbed by the brain is visual. So how can you illustrate the subject to catch your reader's attention? Don't forget, you can use stock phot photography. You don't need to be selling a product to use visuals. This photo of a beautiful seaside cliff in Hawaii grabs the reader and makes her want to learn more about seeing it in person. Next, what is it that you need to write? Remember, um, respond to the last question you were asked. Your paragraph can be just a few words introducing a link or a longer explanation about the subject or a tip to answer the question in a few steps. In the example, the paragraph explains that rental, rentals are available and that every third night is free. Finally, you need a call to action. So what do you want your audience to do in reaction to your email? Come to your business for a consultation, buy a product, register for an event, or donate. Make your call to action prominent and clear. Here, the call to action is a link where readers can go to the vacation company's website and see, then hopefully reserve, available rentals in Kauai. Many small business owners say, I'm doing just fine without social media and email marketing. Well, I have to admit, I thought that myself at one time and I was just wrong. My business was failing and what I learned uh, to strategize and use a strategy that makes me visible by sharing content and then planting seeds and dripping on those seeds that I've planted. The other thing I hear from small business owners is that I tried email marketing and it doesn't work. Well, in a way that's correct because it doesn't work immediately and it doesn't work at all if you're too pushy, salesy, and slimy and sleazy. It doesn't work when you're haphazard and you don't use a strategy. So you may be thinking, well, I don't have enough money or time to spend on an email marketing tool. Well, most of the techniques that I've been teaching require a time commitment and everything that I'm teaching you to do can be done on constant contact for a minimal investment to take your business to the next level and get great results. So what I want to do is give you an offer so that you can test and try out constant contact for those of you who are not currently using constant contact. This offer is exclusively available to those of you who are on this webinar and it offers you constant contact for $5 a month for three months. So let me tell you what you will get with that offer. You'll get three months of constant contact email service, as well as 24 hour award winning customer service. The customer service number I've listed here, where you have access to customer success coaches who will help you upload your list. They will help you customize a template and set it up and get your first email sent out. After the promotional period, the monthly pricing that is based upon the size of your list will kick in. So in order for you to take advantage of this offer, you're going to want to write down this link. It is www.constantcontact.com slash event dash Landry. So if you use that link, you will be able to take advantage of Constant Contact for $5 a month for three months. So I want to thank you for participating and I want to end by just showing you how easy and simple Constant Contact is. This is a short video that shows you how to set up uh, an email using Constant Contact. So take a look.
You really can do this. We're here to help. All the marketing tools you need together in one place with Constant Contact. Thank you so much for participating in this webinar.